Hello everyone. So today uh, I'm going to talk about multi-layer perceptron model working. So I'll be talking about a basic idea behind multi-layer perceptron model and what are the limitations behind the single uh, perceptron model. Okay, so let's start. So let me uh, uh, quickly recap the uh, single uh, perceptron model, how it works basically. So in single perceptron, uh, we have one neuron in place and it accepts uh, a different input. So, so here we have two inputs, X1 and X2. And then inside this neuron, basically we have a function F of X that is nothing but the weighted sum of these inputs along with weight and then uh, bias. So that is the formula like f of x is equal to x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus b. That is the bias term basically. Okay. And then on top of this, we apply a one activation function basically. So that's also written here. So activation function could be uh, any function like uh, there are multiple activation function are being used in deep learning. Here. So like sigmoid function, ReLU, tan h. Okay. So I mean in upcoming video, I will be talking in depth about activation function. But uh, here you just think about, okay, this is also some kind of mathematical function. So whatever output we get uh, from this weighted sum uh, of input uh, uh, that we apply in this activation function and that is our final output basically y. Okay, so this is uh, what happens inside a single neuron model basically. Okay, so now suppose we have um, this uh, data item and we pass through a single uh, neuron, uh, single perceptron model, then it can easily classify this in two categories because you see here there are two different categories basically. Okay, so uh, one important point here I want to make it like uh, it is able to classify linearly separable data item. So here you see like this data item is easily uh, linear nearly separable clear cut uh, indication is there right you can simply draw a line and it will be linearly separable okay but to what about we have something like this our data items are like this okay then can our single perceptron model will be able to uh, classify them easily okay so that's where like uh, limitation of single perceptron model occurs basically it can uh, draw a line it can easily classify as a linearly separable data item but this is not a linearly separable data item so it will try to uh, separate them with a single line so it will draw a line randomly basically so it is trying to classify this item but there are misclassifying it is misclassifying this data item right or it may draw a line here so then this will be in one category and this will be in another category or it can also draw a line like this okay but idea behind is like a single perceptron will only draw one line it will classify with the help of one line so that's where like we cannot use single perceptron model in our complex problem okay so that's where like uh, we need multiple per perceptron basically and from there like the idea of multi-layer perceptron model occurs and what is the meaning behind layer basically of course we can have multiple uh, perceptron associated together okay so that's where like when uh, our uh, problem gets complex and complex so we uh, uh, apply multiple layers of the set of perceptron basically so let me show that uh, as well okay so here you see like uh, we have one input layer so that is like uh, simple the inputs basically and then one hidden layer and then output layer so this the multi-layer perceptron model uh, will have at least one hidden layer so the layer other than the input and output layer those are named as hidden hidden layer okay and based on the complexity of the problem there could be multiple hidden layers okay so uh, um, i mean um, before going in a uh, very complex problem let's understand the basic uh, idea behind multiple perceptron model okay multi-layer perceptron model because a concept remains same and that will um, be applied uh, doesn't matter how many layers or how many perceptron you have in each layer okay so let's understand with this simple uh, two perceptron hidden layer okay so what happened like suppose you apply uh, this um, a type of input here and we have a two perceptron in this hidden layer then it will easily uh, separate them because uh, this uh, so for like uh, I mean in very simple terminology if I say okay this is uh, drawing this line and this is drawing this line okay and that's how together they are able to classify um, this whole data item basically. 
okay so that's how this works and now uh, like how this weight uh, management happens basically so this i have already told okay this fx is nothing but the weighted sum so in this case this fx will be like uh, so w1 x1 and plus w3 x3 because these are the two incoming arrows and then plus bias b1 okay and this fx will be like a w2 x1 plus w4 x2 plus b2 okay and then on top of that we apply some activation function and then we will get the final output and again this will act as the input for this one and then this also has some weight associated with and then again you take the uh, weighted sum here and apply activation function and that will be the final activation function on output layer and that will classify this one okay so this is the complete flow basically okay so in this video i just want to give the intuition uh, how the uh, data flow in multi-layer perceptron model but in next video i will talk about the, uh, the how weights are getting calculated i will show you step by step okay but let's concentrate um, uh, in this video first okay so now uh, two neurons will form two linear separable line and this is how multiple neurons are perceptron with many hidden layers handle the non-linearly separable data item because this is clearly non-linearly separable data item right now, uh, important point I have noted down here for your later reference, like uh, as I already told, multiple uh, multi-layer perceptron model contains at least one hidden layer. Okay, it can have more than one hidden layer, and uh, hidden layer are those like other than input and output layer. All other layers are known as hidden layer. Okay, so there will be one input layer which which will have direct linkage with input and output layer. Of course, it is producing the output, and internal processing will happen in hidden layer basically. Okay. So uh, if uh, suppose, so now, yeah, you see in like, if you have this data item, then with one line, we can easily separate. So the one neuron will be sufficient, okay? For this, like a two neuron in one hidden layer will be sufficient, right? Um, so this is fine. But what about like, if we have a data item, very complex data item, something like this, okay? So can two uh, neuron will be enough? Like, can you draw, can you separate this data item in blue and orange with two uh, linearly separate uh, uh, lines? No. Three, no, four, no, right? You need multiple infinite number of, uh, almost infinite number of linearly line to separate this, right? And combine this and then form a kind of circle, right? So, but uh, we will see, okay, how uh, neuron uh, will uh, separate this data item as well, okay? But uh, um, uh, my idea to uh, tell you here, like, okay, this is not linearly separable. So that's where we will be needing multiple neuron associated with each other with uh, uh, forming multiple hidden layers. Right, it's kind of complex multi-layer perceptron model, and that will finally uh, be able to uh, segregate these data item as well and and this as well. Okay. So basically, this was the need to have multiple hidden layers, basically, because uh, one or two hidden layers are not uh, sufficient, basically, to separate this data item. And that's where, like, uh, let's now understand the complete uh, architecture of architecture data flow of uh, multi-layer perceptron model. Okay. So we have an input layer, which is directly associated with inputs, basically. And then we have hidden layers, uh, which do internal processing. So, it, so each neuron will contain like uh, the uh, function f of x, that is nothing but the weighted sum of these uh, inputs, basically, along with some weights. And then on top of that, it will apply some activation function. And that will be finally the output of this uh, neuron. And this will act as the input, uh, input uh, for all other uh, like next uh, layer neurons basically. So that's how data flows basically. And then you have finally the output layer, okay? So this is like one phase, like one feed forward network, okay, fully connected. But in one flow itself, your accuracy will not be that high. So that's where what happens, you record the uh, error here. Error is nothing but the uh, like uh, actual minus predicted. So in very simple uh, terminology, Okay, and then you see, okay, there is an error, then you back propagate that error, basically. And that's uh, the process of back propagation. So that's complete concept, basically, very important concept. That's uh, with the help of back propagation, only a neural network learns, basically, learns the pattern in their data. Okay, so learning happen with the help of back propagation. So back propagation concept, again, I'm going to explain in my next video, basically. Okay, so I'm going to complete this complete series of neural network. Okay, so don't worry, I'll cover that as well okay but i'm just giving the intuition okay in back so you will have multiple cycles of this multiple iteration and in those multiple iteration basically so in each iteration based on the error these weights will be updated okay and with newly updated weight this new uh, 
uh, fx will be calculated and then uh, on top of that you will apply again activation function and then you will get the input for next uh, neuron basically and then this will be repeated multiple times until you get uh, one uh, so a good amount of accuracy basically classification accuracy okay or it could be a regression as well okay so this one complete cycle is known as one epoch so on that one epoch complete one training data is passed basically okay so this all i will cover in uh, back propagation okay so now uh, like in tensorflow.org there is a very uh, nice uh, animation sort of uh, thing is there like playground.tensorflow so let's go there and visualize how things happens basically in reality Okay, so let me go there. So this is basically that uh, uh, playground.tensorflow.org. Okay, if you come here, then you can play by yourself. Okay, so here um, we have uh, these uh, four different ty types of data items basically. Okay, and we'll run these uh, with the basic one uh, perceptron model uh, with uh, two perceptron model. Then we'll multiple perceptron model. We'll see how this works basically. Okay, so let's um, uh, visualize this very basic one. That is a linearly separable data item. Okay, and these are anyway input layers. So these two uh, inputs are so x1 and x2 x2 are associated with that one and then we have like one hidden layer that contains only one neuron okay one neuron basic one neuron okay and then you will see okay this it can easily be separated with one neuron okay and here you see there are some like uh, features are associated with that one like there's a learning rate on uh, at what learning rate uh, it will get saturated basically okay and then there are different uh, activation function i already shown there like inside neuron we apply activation function and then there are some regularization and regularization rate and this is of course a problem of classification okay so these are the, some other features attribute associated so this i will explain in depth in next learning okay in next videos but the timing just focus on visualization okay so if i start this learning okay then see this one uh, uh, neuron itself is able to uh, classify them okay so if i just go back again and you so i will show you one more thing okay here um, they are starting with weight is equal to 0 0.060 okay so uh, idea is like you start with some random weight you see so here they are taking 0 0.16 you can take 0 0.26 as well 0 0.20 as well okay you start with some random weight okay and then um in learning process that is a back propagation okay in that process it will keep on adjusting the weight based on how accuracy it is getting okay so you see it is 0 0.60 if i run so it is it will get updated every time so see it is 0 0.59 now it got updated 0 0.62 then again 0 0.63 then again 0 0.64 right and in this as well 0 0.82 0 0.83 84 it is updating okay and here as well you will see 0 0.2.3 Okay, so 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4. Okay, so almost in 2.4, it got saturated, right? So fair enough, right? So it, so it is able to uh, linearly classify it very well, right? But if you take this a data item and you run this with single neuron, will it be able to classify or not? Let's uh, run this, okay, and see, visualize it. See here, what is happening? It is uh, trying. It is trying to uh, separate it with one data item. Okay, so that is um, the, uh, sorry, one uh, linear line. So it is able, to, like, it is drawing line somewhere here, basically, right? But uh, this is the misclassified one, right? So that's where I told, okay, it is not able to classify uh, this data item with one neuron. So let's stop this and increase the number of neuron. Let's say we have two neurons basically, okay? And we have some initial weights associated with that. Okay, so in next video, I am going to tell you by calculating, right, uh, how these weights are calculated, okay? But for now, just think, okay, these are randomly assigned weight and then it will be passed like weighted sum like W1, X1 plus W2, X2 here. And on top of that, some activation function will be applied and that's how it will generate this output, okay? So, and on top of that, again, uh, some weight will be applied here. The final output will be like uh, here. So uh, output of this, so that will be some H1 and then W1, then this H2, W2. And then on top of that, again, apply the uh, final activation function that is associated with the output layer, okay? And that's how it will be calculated. So this complete mathematical calculation, I will show in the next video, but for now, just visualize it, okay? So let me uh, run this again. And now you see here, it is very easily able to classify this data item with two neurons. See, it is kind of drawing two linear lines, right? By two linear line, it is a, a separable data item, right? Let's stop this and increase further complexity about our data. And now we'll see this one, okay? And let's run this again, whether it will be able to classify or not. 
so it is trying basically right it is trying very hard but uh, somehow like uh, these uh, many misclassification errors misclassification data items are there right so let me stop and increase one neuron okay and let me run the same thing with same parameters and see uh, what it is oh it got right so see uh, it got saturated and it is uh, clearly able to classify see it got one boundary here right this circle kind of thing right so see see the power of even by increasing one neuron within the same layer it is able to classify this data so that's the power basically right but let's uh, further improve the complexity this uh, one right and then let's see whether it will do it or not let so see and in every epoch basically so every epoch will pass the complete data item right so like suppose this 200 epoch then 200 time every data item is passed basically so it is not uh, learning anything right so let's stop and uh, increase the number of layers basically and then see what is happening here so something something right uh, now you are able to observe something is happening here so it is drawing this one and like this uh, linear boundary okay but um, let's stop this again and let's increase some neurons basically okay in first layer and see what will happen uh, okay so let's uh, see what is happening here something something right so it is trying to so uh, classify but this is very hard data so maybe we need many more hidden layer here basically okay see here it is doing something learning so 300 332 so these many epochs has been uh, iterated basically and then see it is trying to so see here it is forming one circle here kind of right and this is complete blue region and then this is blue region so see and this blue region so multiple boundaries it is forming right and it is learning right so see that is the uh, capabilities of this right and uh, by this dotted line you see weights are increasing okay and even if you can have uh, one more neuron or one more layer or multiple layers right you can uh, just increase and uh, just uh, play around this right you can just uh, play around this just uh, start this again and then maybe you see what happens here okay so i'm just assigning random thing here and you'll see whether it is learning or not Right? and sometimes overfitting might also happen so there are various cases here basically okay so you you can uh, play with it basically this is uh, you can just type this link and just to go through and play by yourself okay then you it will be very easy and it will give you very good nice idea basically okay and then there are certain other feature as well so this of course uh, we can change and we can play around with this so okay so i think that's all about uh, multi layer perceptron model how it works basically okay so i hope uh, you like the uh, video and uh, yeah so in next uh, upcoming uh, videos i'll be uh, making uh, multiple videos on uh, the complete neural network series so if you like then please uh, subscribe to my channel and like this video and that's how you can help me and keep me motivated to uh, make uh, further videos so that's all. Thank you for watching.